I'm Reverend Amy Cantrell, and I, along with Adrian Sigmund and Poncho Bermejo, make up the core team at Beloved Asheville, named for Jesus' baptism story and Dr. King's beloved community. We call hundreds of folks into an intersectional community rooted in justice and love beginning to explore what would it mean to live out the powerful teachings of Jesus and the powerful actions of Jesus in our day-to-day -day lives. One of the things that I became very aware of is what Paul described in his day as stoicheia, ABCs. I have four-year-old twins and they sing A, B, C, D, E, F, G. They know their ABCs and they're almost at the age where they'll be learning the ABCs of the theology of empire. Often that starts in school classrooms and even churches with a Pledge of Allegiance. The word in Greek for faith is pistos and it literally means allegiance. And so I've come to realize in my own life that I wasn't aware of where I was pledging allegiance in my day-to-day -day life and what I was doing and the, the things that I was about in the world until I became a part of a, in a community that began to say, what does it mean to be intentional about our lives? And I believe intentionality will save us. What does it mean to get intentional about the theology that, that we practice, not just the theology that we have in our hearts and our minds. And so many of us claim the name of Jesus and yet don't really live out his theology. I used to teach community college and one of the things that, that I would ask my students is, why are you here? Um, why did you decide to major and what you're majoring in? And most often the answer was, I want to get a better job so I can make more money to get a nice ride and a decent house and have the things that make for the American dream. It was one of the things that I realized that most of my students were Christian and yet they were pursuing the American dream far more than they were pursuing the gospel in their day-to-day -day lives. And so I joined with William Stringfellow, a theologian who says that we tend to read the Bible Americanly rather than reading America biblically. And the more I think about that, the more it's true that we read the Bible through an American lens, a lens that really is tainted with the theology of empire. And empire really starts with conquest. And we are in a time of revelation right now, I think, in America. Um, many people are waking up to what some people have known for a very, very long time. That America is foundationed on the horrendous acts of human beings toward one another that represent a deep theology of empire, often in using the name of God to, to support that theology. So stolen land the mass genocide or enslavement of people, laws and policies that desecrated the image of God in humanity and still to this day do that. And so what would it mean to, to really begin to look at the ways that we, in Lawrence Hill's words, have been miseducated in both our culture and in our churches that too often reflect our own culture. And I find that I can only really understand the ways that I've been miseducated in, in a true community of faith, a community that begins to say, our allegiance might belong to someone else other than the emperor or other than those who possess the highest offices in, in the land or the culture that reigns here. Some years ago, I was in a nursing home and I was with a choir and we were singing to the folks there and we came out of the, this nursing home in a little town called Canton, not far from here. And I looked across the street and there was this low slung concrete block 
small church. And it happened to be the church of God, but the G had fallen off. And so it was the church of odd. And I realized that I was a card carrying member of the church of odd or hope to be that I hope that my faith, my theology, my allegiance to Jesus Christ made me deeply peculiar in this culture. One day we were reading in our study here at Beloved, the Beatitudes, a very common teaching of Jesus. And many of us had heard it so many times that it had become too familiar, if that makes sense. And so I challenge folks to, to read it in opposites. So wherever it said, blessed are the, we would say, what is the opposite of that? Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the rich and famous. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the warmongers. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who thirst for vengeance, who say an eye for an eye. And on we went through the Beatitudes. And by the end, we were all stunned, almost breathless, saying, this is our culture. Blessed are the rich and famous. Blessed are the warmongers. Blessed are those who are bloodthirsty for vengeance. It took us aback and we began to say, what would it mean for us to truly live out the Beatitudes? And we found ourselves possessing what Alice Walker would say is the secret of joy. The secret of joy is resistance. And so we took up this powerful theology of resistance. Because we began to realize that when we said, God bless America, we were really saying, God bless the empire. And we wanted to begin to say, what would it look like if we were living this sort of queer theology, this theology that makes us the church of odd, that makes us somehow peculiar in the things that we did? And what we realize is that we have all of the, the powerful tools that we need right there in the heart of our faith. Because Christianity was formed in the belly of the beast, in the heart of when empire was rising, just as it is now and has been in America. On January the 6th, one who possesses deeply and is possessed by the theology of empire called for a ban on people who practice the Muslim faith and called for there to be a wall, a security wall built at our border. And we grieved at Beloved. And we said, what are we going to do about this? We need to practice something tonight. And so we decided we would walk to the end of our street where the federal building resides and we would simply write the word love in tea light candles in large letters right in front of the federal building. And basically to put in public what it was that was our determination and our theology that we were going to intentionally practice every day. We wanted to put that out in public as Cornel West says that justice is what faith looks like in public. It's what love looks like in public. And so as we began to light those candles, blue lights began to swirl all around us and the police came and they said, you cannot have open flame here. And so on that night we chose to return to the house um, just one block away where we live and move and, and have our being and try to practice the theology of resistance. And we took those tea light candles and we lit up the word love in our living room. And we sat with that almost in meditation. And not too long after that, the doorbell rang. And we went to the door and our dear friend Harry Rivera was there. And we invited him in. And he was stunned by the beautiful display of light in our living room. And he said, wow, this looks like a church. And Poncho said, this is a church. And I said, yeah, the Church of Resistance. And so ever since then, we have said we are a people who want to be known as the Church of Resistance. And so I want to challenge you all today that are listening 
to what is the theology that you're living out? Um, one of the things my brother Poncho says is the protest is every day. Um, we think it's powerful to go to the streets and resist, but we also know that the deepest resistance that we can practice is how we live our lives every day, how we put into practice our theology of resistance. If we believe that God is about liberation and that God resists empire, if God resists anything that diminishes the image of God in another person, that God resists anything that might oppress someone or some group of people and harm the image of God in all of us and harm the deep and beautiful ways that we can come into a community together, then we must resist that every day in our daily practices. And one of the things that I see as a pastor and faith leader is that so many of us attend church on Sunday. We worship and we, we often hear maybe a theology of resistance, but we go back to our day-to-day -day lives and we begin to, as we don't live intentionally, live out of our unconscious ABCs of this culture that we were taught from a very, very young age. And so I believe that we need more than ever to be in circles of accountability and in circles of love and community and intentionality that really challenge us to resist every day. And so what that looks like at Be Loved is that we believe in sanctuary. And so we have created a, a sanctuary out of our home where we live out safe space for everyone and where we are beginning to develop justice leaders from all walks of life through powerful projects. We, we are building neighborhood fiestas so we can teach the notion that we must resist and defend our communities wherever we are and that we as natural leaders in those communities are the ones to, to share and support um, the people in our communities to be the ones we've been waiting for. We are working with a powerful community of people that happen to be homeless here who have decided to raise their voices as a group called Homeless Boys and who have formed the first street medic team in the nation to begin to try to cut uh, the risk of death because we know homeless people here in America are much more likely to die at a young age. In fact, CNN says it's the most fatal condition in the country. And we are ramping up people to begin to look at every part of the ways that we even fund the theology of empire uh, through calling the police on our siblings of color and through funding military and police in our federal, state, and city budgets rather than funding things that make for life. And so I call on all of us to begin to look at how we live out our theology every day. The protest is every day and the secret of joy is resistance.